And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I cannot tell you how personally and professionally excited I am to bring this special guest. I have been a fan of his for quite some time. I even have a few of his books. I will make sure we put the link wow. to these books on the show notes. But guys, y'all give it up for none other than Jeff Toyster. All right. Hey, hey Jeff, Gary. Can, yeah, can you hear, hear your it. fan club? I can hear it. Yeah. That's There's sweet. like maybe my mom or somebody's like, <laughs> hey, slow it's clap, a, a slow right golf on. clap. That <laughs> hey, every little bit helps. <laughs> but they're they're fan they're fans of yours. Oh and, no. and now I get to meet them as well. So well, I appreciate that. fans out there. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, Jeff, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Well, I'm I'm I call myself a service culture guide. And, and what that means is I help leaders build customer focused culture. It's what I'm obsessed about. And I, I do that in a number of different ways. I, I do a lot of different research on how to elite organizations get all of their employees obsessed with service. And I write about it in some of those books that you you so generously shared. Uh, I also post on on LinkedIn Monday through Friday about service culture topics. I have a, a weekly newsletter called Customer Service Tip of the Week. And I've also been lucky enough to put a lot of my customer service training courses on LinkedIn Learning. So literally millions of people around the world can access them. And then finally, I do do some, some keynote speaking as well. So presentations to conferences and, and corporate events. And again, spreading that message around customer obsession. How do we get our teams and our organizations absolutely obsessed with service. That's what I, I think about all day long, go to bed dreaming about and wake up excited about. <laughs> I love it. I can actually feel the energy, the customer service energy. And it was interesting while I was communicating with you. It was interesting because you have that that energy or that vibe for customer service. My My thoughts were, how can I best serve Jeff through this communication process? So you really do have that and it really does emanate all the way around or maybe it was because I, I read your amazing books and I just I was inspired by it so I'm going to make sure we put the again the links to your books and the link to your website in the show notes so people can connect with you follow you on LinkedIn and all the things um, to be inspired by all that you do but Jeff you know I love to connect with inspiring leaders and I truly consider you to be one of those inspiring leaders and I love to peek behind the curtain and find out what inspires an inspiring leader. So I reached out to you and asked you, Jeff, what inspires you? And you alluded to it uh, in your introduction. But the first topic that you shared with me is service culture on the, on the list. And I, I love that you say that you're fascinated with what those elite companies do that the other ones don't. So what is it? Why Why does this inspire you so much? I think for a number of reasons. One is... I I'm a customer. You're a customer. We're all customers. And, and if we're we're being honest, there's only a few companies out there that we know we can count on to consistently provide amazing service. Yet, yet if we have a service experience that's not so great, the reaction is always, it was so obvious what they should have done. And I think there's a real disconnect. And, and so I've always been fascinated by, well, how do these few companies, what are they able to do that no one else can figure out. And, and to me, that's part of the fun. So you're in the uh, the Dallas area, is that right? Yes, sir. And I believe you have In-N-Out uh, that's located near you. Have, you. have you ever been to In-N-Out before? I've been there a couple of times. Yes, sir. So if you go to In-N-Out, even in Whataburger <laughs> territory, you know, Whataburger does just fine, but you're also going to see a line at the In-N-Out. There's going to be a line of cars around the drive through and Certainly in my neighborhood, there's a line of cars around the drive-thru. I'm in, I'm in San Diego, California. Directly across the street from my local in and out there's another fast food chain. And on a, any given evening, there's a 20, 30-minute wait for in and out And people are very happy to wait this amount. And there might be one car in the drive-thru at the chain across the street. What's the difference? And, and it's to me, it's it's service culture. And so that fascinates me. And, and it's amazing when you look at an organization like in and out that can that can do that, uh, they do a few things that other organizations just 
don't do. They've defined what great service looks like. They execute it and everything they do in their organization is built around that. And that's why they have that line and their competitors don't. Wow. And, and, and that is true. And I think a lot of us will will sacrifice our time in order to have that customer or be a part of that customer service culture. And or we may spend more money to have that customer service culture. And, and I love that you're fascinated or you're intrigued by that service culture. Um, why are these people sitting in line to go get a hamburger when across the street they could get probably a similar hamburger and yet they'll wait 20, 30 minutes in line. But you're you're so fascinated, you're so intrigued by that that you will just explore it until you figure out what it is. And you and and you truly do. And I love you have that story in the book. And I love how you just unpack that understanding or that recognition of what that service culture is. No, it's I think when we start asking the question why, and you know, mm-hmm. in our own lives as customers. It, it is fun. I, I think it's fun. It, it's to, to figure out what do these companies do? And especially because for me, it, it uh, you see organizations that there's just so few. It, why, why is it that other organizations can't, can't emulate that? And, mm-hmm. and that's the secret, right? That's yeah. the secret sauce. <laughs> that's right. And it's, and it's interesting because there are so few. So and there and there's a lot that are in the middle ground. There's you know the top two three percent, and then yeah. the vast majority or below it, and and you call them normal or average. Right. But it's it's that top two to three percent that truly has a culture. They've got it figured out, and are they're continuously improving it so that they can stay. And it's good to know what it is so you can rise to that level as well. And and Jeff, so the second thing you brought up in your inspiration was customer experience. And of course, you can't have, I mean, you can create a customer experience, but it's it's going to be good or bad or indifferent. And so the service culture is what, in my perspective, is what kind of creates that experience. And I like how you wrote that, you know, the customer experience is complex in of itself because it's it's the interaction with, you know, it's a sum of interaction, as you put it, with your brand. And so what is it about this experience, customer experience that inspires you? I, I think it's it it goes back to again being a customer and the idea that uh it really is something that's incredibly complex, but there's a few organizations that have figured out how to simplify things in a way to make it manageable. So uh I'll give you a, an, an example I, I bet you're familiar with. Uh being in Texas, you've probably been to Bucky's before, I imagine, right? <laughs> yes. Now, for can you tell me, like, for for our, for listeners who are like Bucky's, what's Bucky's? <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a risk here. What's yeah. Bucky's? <clears throat> Bucky's is the biggest gas station you will ever go to. However, on top of that, they have created an interior and inside <clears throat> that is bar none, amazing, bathrooms included, and so it, it is an experience. Experience. You can go to a convenience store, you can go to a standard gas station, but if you go to a Bucky's, it is an experience. Yeah. And that's so I mean, Gary, I took a risk. We we didn't prep this. I didn't say, all right, I'm gonna ask you about Bucky's. You know, be ready. <laughs> I just asked you and I had confidence you would know what Bucky's is all about. And if you don't happen to live in Texas or the southeastern United States, <laughs> I'm in San Diego. The nearest Bucky's is a thousand miles away. I'm, I'm going to show this. I have this in my office, this sign. This is, I'm a Bucky's fan. And you think about, you know, the experience. Gary, you nailed it. It's it's all the interactions that we have with the brand. And, you know, why are so many people enthusiastic about a convenience store brand? <laughs> It's it's because Bucky's understands what their experience should be and they they execute it. You know, Bucky's has done a few things I think most convenience stores don't. The number one thing that they they understand about me and about you is their customer, they know who their customer is. It's not just anybody. Mm-hmm. Customer at Bucky's is someone who's on a road trip. And on a road trip, what do you care most about when you need to make a stop? It's finding a clean restroom. And Bucky's promises you. We're going to have the most, the cleanest, the best gas station restrooms you could ever 
ever imagined. And they deliver on that promise every time. I don't know why no other gas station has figured this out, but Bucky's as a chain. And not only have they nailed it, 46% of Yelp reviews about Bucky's talk about the clean restrooms. You mentioned the clean restrooms, right? It's the call, it's what gets us to stop. But then once you stop there, they operate on a few basic principles, clean, friendly, and in stock. That's simple. But if you go into a Bucky's and if, if you've never been there, um, if you're watching this, I encourage you to check it out or just Google Bucky's. You will be amazed. <laughs> Convenience store, they get on average four times as many customers as their nearest competitor because they have this consistently great experience around the simple things that a road trip traveler is looking for. Clean restrooms, uh, really a clean store, friendly people, and everything you need is in stock. And I will say, and then some. Bucky's has got you covered. That's why it's a destination. And I, I'm fascinated because it's so simple. It's out there in the open. Why can nobody copy Bucky's, but they, they haven't figured it out yet? It, it is truly unbelievable. And I've just my wife is 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 a huge fan. I, I would almost call it a cult of Bucky's because it, it truly is. They have gotten the basics down 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. And it, it's the basics, the clean bathrooms, and there are, it's a huge bathroom, so you never have to wait. And the, the like you said, they, they understand who their audience is or who their customer is, and they're ready for them. And they have all the things that their customer would want, candy, beef jerky, um, you know, breakfast foods, lunch foods, drinks, coffee. I mean, and, and then they go above and beyond and have all the Bucky's gear. And then some, and it's, it is truly unbelievable, but it is because they've got those basics. I absolutely agree with you. And it's, it, I think sometimes people think about customer experience as just service. You mm -hmm. know, we have friendly employees and that's part of it, but it's by design. Like you mentioned the restrooms, you, you walk in a restroom and you might see like dirty stalls. That's a design. I mean, you have to have a great employee who's there to keep everything friendly and, and, and uh, a good repair and clean. But it starts with the design, the design of the stores. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing because they're so huge. And, and, and you've probably experienced this. Sometimes you go to a Bucky's and the, it's almost intimidating. It's so big, but you walk <laughs> in, it's really easy to get in and out or the product selection. I went into a Bucky's one time. I'm on a road trip in Texas and me being not very smart. I left my dog's leash behind. So we got it. My wife and I have a dog with us. No leash. You know who's got us covered? Bucky's. <laughs> Bucky's has got a little dog section because they know people like me are occasionally idiots. And we got you. I knew got I could cover. <laughs> right, right. And, and that is so true. And, and Bucky's, and I, you know, and I imagine there are, you know, many other examples of great companies that have. One, they've gotten the basics down pat 100%, 100% of the time. And that consistency as, you know, kind of what you talked about as well with in and out because they're consistently providing great service. And so people will jam pack into an in and out drive through line and they will jam pack into a Bucky's gas station convenience store just because they know what they're going to get and it's going to be good. Yeah, that reliability is so key, but so elusive. Yeah, that, that, and it is, it's amazing. And, it, and I love that you're fascinated by these things because what it does for us is we get to experience your research, your, your fascination and, and the things that you uncover from that. And we get to say, God, Jeff, thank you so much for, for doing the, the legwork for us and, and just bubbling up what it is that these companies do so well so that maybe we can emulate to the best of our abilities in our own world, in our own business and everything. And, and you, you truly in your books and your training and, and your customer service tips of the week do that and provide such, such great valuable information. Um, but Jeff, we've, we've come close to the end of our time, but before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. I think you know, if, if you are interested in customer service, customer experience, I hope you're fascinated. And one of the questions you can ask yourself every time you have an experience is just ask yourself why. If 
It was a good experience. Why was it a good experience? What what did this company or this employee do to make it a great experience? And if it's a bad one, you might be upset, frustrated, perhaps, but ask yourself why. Why did that happen? And I love having conversations with customer service providers. So I'll give you a real quick example. I was on a flight recently. My favorite airline, Alaska Airlines, they always take care of me consistently amazing experience and i was chatting with one of the flight attendants brent and as i noticed that brent was just friendly he was outgoing he's one of those people that just exuded customer service he wanted everybody on that flight to have a great time and so i was chatting with him and he said that he had uh retired from a a career in the navy he had retired from uh, another career in another industry and he still wanted to keep working and he said this is the easiest job i ever had and, and he didn't mean like he didn't have to work hard. It's just that he was passionate about connecting with people. And he felt that Alaska gave him that opportunity to use his natural personality and, and just exude that that sense of hospitality. Mm-hmm. And so it's amazing when you ask the question, why? Why is this guy Brent creating this amazing experience on this flight? When you ask that question, why, or even talk to people, you will learn so much about mm-hmm what makes organizations tick. And I'll tell you, I've talked to flight attendants in a lot of other airlines and they won't say what Brent said. They will say, this is difficult or we don't have the right resources or corporates are always throwing us under the bus. That's why flight attendants are grumpy. We fly in Alaska, they're happy because they feel they've been put in a position to do what they do best. Wow, I love that. Just ask why, Figure, figure it out what it is that makes this different, makes this special and or not so special. And Jeff, I love that you you remember Brent's name on Alaska Airlines because you you engaged with them and you had that connection with them and just asked them why. And that simple question can unveil, reveal so much if you're just willing to ask and learn. Jeff, this has been absolutely incredible. I'm honored that I got a chance to connect with you here on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Guys, make sure y'all go grab a copy of Jeff's books. They're available on Amazon and on his website. I'm a huge fan. And in fact, as a little, as a, as a book nerd, I, I got it autographed. And so, man, I'm just, this is exciting for me. Guys, we're going to put Jeff's information in the show notes. So you make sure you connect with him, follow up with him, reach out to him, get his books. Absolutely incredible. Jeff, thank you again for joining us on the Super Fantastic Exchange, and we will see you on the next episode.